Our family of six has been very busy putting together our new 1850s farmhouse, but from scratch cooking is still one of our main priorities. So I wanted to take you along with me for a week of what we eat and enjoying the wonderful tastes of summer. I'm going to be making a couple meals for my four week meal plan. You can get this for free now at westmanacademyhomeschool.com. I will also leave the link in the description box below. It is 28 plus meals plus the supply list or shopping list, a meal planner, and they're all from scratch cooking. The best part is because my daughter has celiac, everything is either gluten-free or gluten-free adaptable. So I have both gluten-free specific recipes and meals that you can easily make gluten-free. So I'm starting off by making a chicken sweet potato apple skillet. This is one of my, fam my family's favorite recipes and it can be fairly healthy, especially if you use minimal syrup in kind of the sauce. I'll show you in a little bit, but I am practicing my pastry skills currently. I am working on butter braids. I made mulberry butter braids. They were pretty good, but I am still struggling with kind of having the bottom, keeping them from burning because of all of the butter melting. The bottoms start to get really crisp in the oven. So if you have a way for preventing that, please do let me know. But for this meal, I am just melting butter on a skillet because my family is larger and they like to actually really eat this meal. They sometimes eat two each and my kids are fairly little. So it's actually a decent amount for the age of my children. So you can either add a whole nother skillet or take one away, but I am using bone out or chicken thigh without a bone, however you say it. The recipe actually calls for bone in, that way you can use the bone for chicken stock later, but I actually found that not having the bone works really well and is super easy, especially if I don't have any plans for the bones. So I am just kind of searing them on the skillet. I cook them for about three minutes on each side or until it starts to turn um, white. And then I let it sear as I'm cutting up the apples. I did three apples, three sweet potatoes. It depends on the size, onion, and I'm just pouring in maple syrup. The recipe has specific measurements. You will find in this video that I don't use measurements uh, very well. So I apologize for that, especially if you're someone who really banks on the measurements, I will have the recipes down below as well. So I am adding some time to this and then I just use my hands to mix it up. You wanna make sure that you peel both the apples and the sweet potatoes, which is going to be the longest part of this whole process. But I just have it all mixed up. I added some garlic powder, garlic salt, and regular salt and thyme, and then I just stir it together. You could use your hands, I've, I've done both. And then what you're going to do is remove the chicken from the skillet, place an even amount, or as even as you can get, of the apple sweet potato onion on each skillet and place the chicken back on top. This cooks at 400 degrees for about 30 to 45 minutes. I know that the recipe says for an hour and you can cook it for an hour, but I have found that the chicken thighs that I have been buying have been taking a lot less time. So you pretty much just want to cook your chicken until it reaches 160 or 165 degrees Fahrenheit. But you will see I'm taking off the chicken, placing the potato apple mixture on the skillets, and then the chicken back on. Once everything is situated, I just add some more salt and garlic salt, maybe some onion powder. It doesn't have to be too specific. I also add some thyme. I do a little bit of thyme. I don't want it to be, have an over abundant amount of thyme to where it takes over the taste of everything and the flavor, but enough to give everything a good season. And now I'm just going to be topping my butter braids with just a powdered sugar, heavy cream, vanilla, 
frosting, they were pretty good. But again, I'm trying to work on making sure that the bottoms don't get too crisp. I did get this meal idea from Lisa at Farmhouse on Boone. That's pretty much all recipes. We kind of get inspired by someone and then make it our own which is also my goal for my free four week meal plan that you can download as well. So I totally forgot to film this, but I made Parmesan mushroom chicken and I just seared the chicken and cooked it in butter and then added the mushrooms, added garlic, Parmesan cheese and heavy cream. And then we're also going to be having a salad and then some fruit. So I mixed some Italian seasoning, about a teaspoon, with a giant clove of garlic. So if you have a regular sized garlic, I would say probably two cloves, two or three. So I really like to make homemade noodles, but I actually found um, through their gluten-free spaghetti that the brown rice is super delicious. So if I'm not going to be making my own and since my daughter has celiac, we will be using this, the Jovial brand. The brown rice is actually really good. I am just using my veggie and fruit spray and spraying these heads of broccoli. I then just cut them up, lay them on a sheet pan with unbleached parchment paper. I drizzle some olive oil on them, add some onion, some salt, pepper, garlic salt. You can do onion powder whatever seasonings you like. And then I just kind of mix them around with my hand, spread them out evenly. And I just baked them at 350 degrees for however long the pasta meal cooked for. It's better if you can cook them for about 15 to 20 minutes. The tops might look a little bit dark. That's kind of how you know that they're ready and a little bit crisp. My children loved these, especially my five-year-old daughter which was completely a surprise, very positive surprise. So I actually made these twice this week. I make them a little bit later on, but if you can get them crispier, it's, they're so delicious. And we're not a vegetable loving family. Like I have some friends that their kids will just eat bell peppers. That is not my kids. So the fact that my kids loved this is just really great. And it means that I will be making it more often. I have shredded roughly one pound of cheese. I love my KitchenAid attachment shredder. My grandma got this for me for Christmas and I use it all the time. We never buy already shredded cheese. We don't like the coating or powder, the cellulose on it. And it's just wonderful if you have a cheese grater that you don't have to grate by hand always. So I'm adding that to the pasta, adding a little bit of milk, Again, the recipe will be down below if you want specific measurements. I rarely cook with specific measurements. I will bake with, you know, more <laughs> precise, but cooking wise, I just kind of go with the flow and add what I think is right. So actually for this meal, I didn't make enough of the sauce. I, for one box of pasta, I actually needed to double it. So I did four eggs probably about two teaspoons of mustard. If you're not a Dijon mustard lover, I would just do one teaspoon. You want a hint of it, but you don't want it to be too overpowering. So I did four eggs, two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, and probably a fourth to a half cup of milk. If you noticed, I used the same cast iron enamel 
pot to cook the pasta while it was draining I went ahead and made the sauce in it and now I'm just combining you'll see that I did not have enough sauce so right here I am making another batch again it's super easy but <laughs> don't do what I did if you're using a full box of pasta do the four eggs one fourth one half cup milk and the Dijon mustard The next meal I am making is stuffed acorn squash. So I cut the squash in half and now I am clearing out the inside of the seeds. I'm going to be baking them on 400 for about 40 minutes. Check, make sure your squash is soft. If not, add another 10 minutes. You just wanna make sure that the inside is soft enough to scoop out. I am then going to be drizzling the tops with olive oil and sprinkling it with salt. I cut up apple, celery, onion. You don't have to peel the apples, which is fantastic because that is my least favorite part. I am just taking a cast iron skillet and adding two pounds of sausage. You can do a pound of sausage, a pound of ground beef. I love adding sausage to my beef because it adds such great flavor, but if you wanted to, you could do just ground beef. I did use the skillet earlier for lunch for sausage, so if it didn't look clean, that's why. If I use it for breakfast or lunch and I know I'm going to be using it for supper, I will just leave it and just cook in the same cast iron skillet. You're also going to be adding the celery and onion to the sausage while it cooks. And then in a medium sized bowl, go ahead and scoop out the squash. I did it while they were very hot, which is not the best idea wait till they've cooled down a little bit but add the squash to the bowl with your apples and once your sausage and vegetables are cooked you're going to be adding those into the bowl as well and then stuffing them into the acorn squash lining or outside skin whatever you want to call it if you don't want to place them back into the skin if you're especially if you're not going to eat the skin which i don't think most people do then you can just serve it in the bowl just as is. You can just scoop it straight from the bowl onto the plate. You don't have to put it back into the squash itself, but it does look aesthetically pleasing and kind of just makes the meal come together. I am also going to be adding Parmesan cheese and garlic. Again, I'm not sure how much I used, but the recipe will be in the description box below. You're going to be topping these with some more Parmesan cheese, baking them at 400 degrees for around 15 minutes. So I didn't actually film myself making this. We had a crying baby, he's been sick, and a crying toddler. <laughs> and this is what is left over, kind of dried up, but this is what is left over 
my family actually really liked it. My son thought it looked disgusting. Um, he's four. But he ended up eating it and he said that it was really good. So I wanted to share it anyway. I wrote down the recipe for you just in case you wanted to take a screenshot. So I did one box of the noodles. The noodles don't have to be specific because my daughter has celiac. We do the brown rice pasta if I don't make our own homemade pasta. And the brown rice is, I would assume, better for you. And it actually tastes really good. So it's not one of those gluten-free pastas that you can tell is gluten-free. So I started by, in this just enamel cast iron, I boiled a whole container, 32 ounces or four cups of chicken broth. You can do homemade chicken stock if you like. And I just added this to it. It won't, oh my gosh, it won't cover all the noodles. The noodles will still pop out, but as you're stirring it, it will cook them. And then you can also put the lid on and that will help to steam the noodles. And then once that is boiling, I did some lemon zest. I actually did too much lemon, so I would actually only do half a lemon plus some zest. But if you're not a lemon lover, I would just do the lemon juice because it is good with the lemon, but just a touch of lemon. So I would just do one half of a lemon. You could do zest and juice or just the juice. And then I shredded in the parmesan the parmesan cheese again the brand it doesn't matter and then one cup of baby spinach i did the just the great value organic i did a tablespoon of parsley you can do fresh parsley you can do dried parsley i did one tablespoon of parsley it was really good and then one teaspoon of salt and i'm pretty sure that is all that i did it takes about 15 minutes if that and my family wasn't quite ready to eat. We are juicing apples currently. So I actually just put the lid on and turned off the heat and it stayed warm. If you get to this point while you're making it, I would say this is a touch too dry. You can add more milk or heavy whipping cream. We did whipping cream, it was really good. And then once things sort of settle and cool down because we already ate, so this is like the aftermath, doesn't look as good, um, it kind of dries to its cheesy self. So this was really good. I wanted to still include it in a meal even though I didn't really show myself making it. This next meal is a savory skillet pie. I am just sauteing up one pound of sausage. You can do ground beef, you can do half sausage, half ground beef. I recommend adding some sausage in there. It just adds such great flavor. But I am doing one pound of sausage two carrots diced or chopped, one onion sliced, you can do yellow or white, and one fourth stick of butter. So I am just sauteing the sausage, onion, and carrot. I, am, I melted one fourth stick of butter first. I sauteed it, and then in this bowl, I am whisking kind of the top that you're just going to pour over the sausage and veggies. It is super easy. For the top ingredients, I am doing two eggs, one half pound of cheese, one half cup flour, one fourth cup of milk. I did Colby Jack cheese, but you can do whatever cheese you want. You don't have to coat everything, but you want to make a nice layer on top. My family, especially my husband, loves cheese, so I just topped with more shredded cheese. And then I am baking this for 20 minutes at 375. This is a super, super easy meal. Very quick to throw together and super delicious. Again, I am just baking this with broccoli. I did the olive oil, added some garlic salt, regular salt, pepper, mixed it together with my hands. And I just cooked the broccoli for what the remaining time was left on the skillet. I would recommend putting the broccoli in for at least 20 minutes. It was in for probably 15 minutes. That's about what the skillet had left by the time I had finished preparing the broccoli. This skillet is so easy. It bakes fast. It's so delicious. Your family will love it. And I just slice it like a pie and serve it hot.
The last meal I am making are steaks with Parmesan fried potatoes. I am just taking the T-bone steaks at room temperature and I am just seasoning them with salt. This seasoning that I'm seasoning them with now, my husband made. It's just a combination of salt and pepper, so just an easier way to season the steaks in one. The cast iron skillet that I am needing to use was dirty, so I just used water to wash it, and then I have designated rags to dry my cast iron with. I heat them up, not super hot, and then add a little bit of canola oil, rub it around to bring it back to its nicely seasoned self. I am just heating up lard on medium heat in our enameled Dutch oven. I'm going to be frying diced baby potatoes. I love using the baby red potatoes, but you can use whatever potatoes you want. Once the lard heats up, I just add a potato. If it sizzles, I will go ahead and add the rest of them. Don't stir too often if you want them to be crisp. Wait about five minutes, check one side of the potato if it's crisp and brown go ahead and stir them and then i just set the lid on and just let them cook After I have diced up the potatoes, I just add a little bit of canola oil, salt, and garlic salt. Again, my measurements aren't super specific. I did one teaspoon of salt and then just sprinkled on the garlic salt. And then I used my hands to make sure that all of the salt and oil was combined on all of the potatoes before I used a strainer to add them to the Dutch oven. So I sear the steaks on both sides, roughly three to five minutes, kind of peel it up and see if it is dark and has a nice sear to it. And then I just place it in the oven on low, which is around 170 degrees until it has finished cooking. I use an internal ther thermometer and just make sure that the steaks are cooked thoroughly. You can choose whether you want your steaks to be rare, to well done, and the temperature really depends on how well done you want your steaks. Using a stainless steel strainer, I just remove the potatoes. I try to get as much of the lard off of them as possible. You can also place them on a plate with a paper towel to help absorb up all of the oil and liquid and then I'm just going to be adding a little bit more seasoning and Parmesan on top of the potatoes. This completes my video on from scratch cooking. I hope these meals have inspired you. Again, if you would like exact recipes, they will be in the description box below where you can download my four week meal plan for free. If you are brand new, please consider subscribing. My name is Kelsey and I make videos on homeschool, homemaking and creating a wholesome home.